the body in a comfortable position. And try to relax your legs and your arms. You might want make, want to make a survey, starting with your fingers and going up through your hands, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, relaxing all the joints. And then do the same with your feet, starting with the toes, going up through the feet, the ankles, the knees, the hips. Relax the joints. And then from that relaxed attitude, focus on the breath. Know when the breath is coming in, know when it's going out. Try not to force it. Remember, keep your legs, keep your arms, keep your hands, keep your feet relaxed as you breathe in, as you breathe out. That helps to establish a good rhythm for the breathing, because you'll be able to tell at what point the breath starts getting too long. It's, things are beginning to tense up. Well, you don't want to tense up, so let, thing, let the breath out again. And again, don't push it out too far. Find just the right rhythm for the breathing that allows you to keep your hands and your feet relaxed all the way through. You can focus on the breath in any part of the torso, or at your nose, the neck. The effort here is simply in staying with the breath. Now, in the beginning, you'll find that you will probably tense up around the breath in one way or another, but try to minimize it. Once you catch yourself tensing up, relax. When you've found a good rhythm, stick with it until it doesn't feel good anymore. You're not committed to staying with the same rhythm all the way through the hour. Notice in what ways the breathing needs of the body change. And allow the breath to adjust accordingly. So it's not a physical effort here so much, it's a mental effort, sticking with it, trying to be as continuously aware of the breath as possible. Because the continuity is what allows the mind to settle down and have a sense of ease. So that it doesn't have to jump all around, all over the place. It's got a home right here. You're making it a comfortable home. And all you have to do is just keep it comfortable. An important part of the meditation is finding an object that really pleases you, that you like. Because it's something you're going to have to stay with for long periods of time. Something that not only feels good, but also engages the mind. It's interesting to notice how the breathing energy can affect your mood, how it can affect your general sense of the body. Even when you're feeling a little bit sick, if you breathe in the right way, the body can feel a lot stronger, a lot, a lot healthier. So the breath is chosen as the object of meditation not only because it can be pleasant, but also because it's, it's got a lot of potentials. And if you start getting interested in the potentials, you'll find out that they can do a lot, both for the state of the body and for the state of the mind. And this way your meditation is not simply a process of forcing the mind to stay with the breath. But as you get more and more interested, the element of force gets placed off to the side, as you want to explore, you want to learn. Different issues come up in life, and you can ask yourself, well, how can simply breathing in a different way help the issue? Whether it's an inability to concentrate, or the right, you're in a tense situation with somebody else, or a boring situation with somebody else, whatever. How can the breath help?
It's something right close by, and it's got lots of potentials that we normally don't appreciate. So take the opportunity to learn about them. Notice how the breathing process feels in the different parts of the body. How it feels in the abdomen, how it feels in the chest, in your neck, in your head, going down the back. It's actually a whole body process. Which is why it helps to keep your hands and your feet, your legs and your arms as relaxed as possible throughout. Because as these parts of the body relax, they help the, the rest of the body, the, your back, your stomach, your shoulders, your chest, helps them to relax as well. And that provides a different environment for the mind. You find that its thoughts change, its moods change. Because it's now being squeezed by tension in the body. So the effort here is purely a mental effort. The Buddha talks about right effort. It has nothing to do with how many hours you sit or how many hours of walking meditation you do. Right effort is simply noticing which attitudes of the mind are skillful, which ones are unskillful. Then trying to encourage the skillful ones and let go of the unskillful ones. And you notice very quickly as you sit here, it's not just a matter of the mind. The way you hold the body. can also be skillful or unskillful in the sense that it has an effect on the mind. The way you breathe can be skillful or unskillful. So right, right effort means an effort that's appropriately focused. It's not the matter of how much effort you put in, but how skillful you are. That's sensing what's helpful and what's not helpful, and being able to develop the helpful qualities. There are four qualities that are really helpful here when you do this. The first one is desire. This may seem strange because many times we're taught that the whole purpose of the practice is to get beyond desire, and it is in ultimate terms. But as a means to that end, you need to have the desire to get there. Once you get there, then the desire will end. But you want to use the desire to get there to help you along. In other words, don't get overly focused on what you want out of the meditation. Realize that the meditation is a process of cause and effect. So you're going to focus on the causes. It's like cooking. If all you can think about is eating, then you're not paying careful attention to what you're doing. The food may burn, or you may forget an ingredient, because you're not paying careful attention to what the steps that will take you to the food that you want. So focus on the steps, one by one by one, and the food that you want will come as a result. So in this case, even though we're trying to get the mind into a state of concentration, don't be concerned about whether it's concentrated or not. Just be concerned about focusing on how the breath feels right now in the context of a body that's got its hands and its feet relaxed, its arms and its legs relaxed. Don't try to push through the steps so you can get to the results. It's, it's in the steps that the results come. So keep your desires focused here. 
Next quality is persistence. This means sticking with it all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, and then the next breath, and then the next breath, and just keep on with each breath as it comes. Because there's a momentum that builds up. And as the mind gets more and more used to being here, it can relax more into the breath, relax more into the meditation posture. It's like doing yoga. You take a stance and you find for the first few seconds there's still some stiffness or tension in the body. But as you relax into the stance, you give yourself enough time, you can relax into the stance. And the effect goes deeper. It's the same with the mind. If you stick with this one task of staying with the breath over time, you relax more into the breath, relax more into the way the body feels right now from the inside. Things open up more and more as you get more and more sensitive to more and more subtle levels of tension that you probably didn't notice at the very beginning of the session. And this is what allows the mind to settle in further and further, i.e. giving it time and being observant. The being observant is the next quality. You want to be really intent on watching what you're doing. Try to notice how things are going. Again, you're not just sloughing through or going through the motions. It's in your alertness to what you're doing with each breath that makes all the difference. So be observant to see the breath is going well. Be observant to see whether the mind is staying with the breath or if it's beginning to stray. Watch out for the the warning signs that the mind is getting ready to go. If you don't watch out for that, you suddenly find yourself off in San Francisco, New York, Hong Kong, Australia, England, Norway, the Canary Islands, and you wonder how you got there. Well, it's because your alertness lapsed, your mindfulness lapsed. But it's not the case that these things suddenly lapse without warning. There are warning signals to learn to look for them. The mind may be getting a little bit bored, it may be getting a little bit impatient, it may want some immediate gratification right now, and it starts casting around for some place else to go. Even while it's still with a breath, part of it is getting ready to leap off someplace else, like an inchworm at the edge of a leaf waiting for another leaf to come nearby so it can plop, go off to the next leaf. So when you sense the mind beginning to get antsy like this, note it, and then try to get more into the breath. Ask yourself, are there other parts of the body where there's still tension that's uncomfortable? It's keeping a tightness, say, in your back or in your chest. Try to notice that and let it go. Then you find the mind being, at that point, more willing to settle back in. This connects with the fourth quality, which is your ability to analyze things in terms of cause and effect. If you notice things aren't going well, ask yourself, what could I do to make them go better? This kind of thinking is absolutely necessary to the practice. You evaluate what you're doing, you evaluate the results. You want to see the connection between cause and effect, because this is how insight arises. And it's not the case that insight is going to arise at, at the very end of the practice, only after you've fully mastered concentration. The insight arises in the process of mastering the concentration, as you get more sensitive to your own actions and the results that they give. This also means using your ingenuity. If you've gone through all your bag of tricks and things aren't still going well, ask yourself, well, what might be a better solution? What other ways of conceiving the breath would be helpful? You can think of the breath coming in through the back. You can think of it coming in through the soles of your feet. 
into the palms of your hands. You can think of it coming in and out your eyes or your ears. Play with your perceptions, and you find that that helps things along. And also helps you to begin questioning some of the perceptions you've been bringing to the practice. Exactly how does the breath come in, anyhow? What is breath energy? What pulls the breath in? What pushes it out? Does it have to be pulled? Does it have to be pushed? Start questioning things like this, and you're laying the foundation for insight. These four qualities, desire, persistence, intentness, and your powers of analysis, they're called the basis for success. They're the qualities that underlie any kind of success in your meditation. They allow concentration to happen and to be mastered as a skill. They're actually qualities that would apply to any skill that you'd like to you'd like to master. You have to want to get the results, and you also have to want to do all the things that are needed to be done. If you're going to learn how to play the piano, you have to learn how to want to do the, the practices, want to play the scales. And then you stick with it. And you find ways of encouraging yourself to stick with it so it doesn't get dry. You pay careful attention. You listen to the way you play. And if you don't like the way you, your playing sounds, well, try to figure out ways of making it better. There you are. Desire, persistence, intentness, and powers of analysis. These four qualities bring success in any skill, and especially to the skills of meditation, because concentration depends on them. The insight you're going to develop from the concentration depends on them as well. So there is effort in the meditation. You have goals in the meditation, but the effort involves working with ease in the body. and with a sense of patience, knowing that if you do the steps well, you get to the end. If you try to skip over the steps to get to the end more quickly, you find you, you've gotten lost. So value each breath. When you catch yourself slipping off of the breath, value the fact that you caught yourself. Come back to the breath and learn how to appreciate the steps that are required, because it's only within the steps that the goal is found, that success is attained. So keep these qualities in mind always. When things aren't going well in the meditation, ask yourself which quality is missing, and then do what you can to make up the lack. <laughs>